Hi everyone, welcome to the last devotion in the power of communion. I hope that for the last few weeks that you've enjoyed these, I hope that you've been encouraged by them and learned that the blood of Jesus Christ, the broken body of Christ is for us. It's for our redemption. It's our covenant with him. When he went to the cross, he paid the ultimate price to purchase us, to take us back, if you will, from the grips of sin, death, hell, and the grave. No longer do those powers have any power over you. Sickness has no power over you. Doubt has no power over you. Lies have no power over you simply because of his blood and because of his broken body. Now today I want to talk to you about how communion actually makes us more aware of his presence. You see, when we remember the body of Christ and when we remember the blood of Jesus, it brings back to us an alignment with heaven. You know, the angels in heaven right now are all in awe of what Jesus provided for us. They're in awe. They want to know more about him. And when we remember him and when we talk about the cross and when we talk about um, him going to the grave and when we talk about the resurrection, when we talk about those kinds of things, all of heaven begins to pay attention to our surrounding because they are enthralled with what Jesus Christ did for us. Heaven and heaven's atmosphere is attracted to Jesus. It's attracted to the brokenness and the blood of Jesus Christ that was paid for you and for me and for the generations to come. You see, the book of Colossians says that he did it once and for all. His yes and amen was the promise. His it is finished was the promise for me and for you to have completed work in him. No longer. See, no longer do I have to try to work for his favor. No longer do I have to try to work for his blessing. No longer do I have to try to work for his good grace, if you will. Because of the cross of Jesus, because of what he accomplished for us, the Bible says it is finished. It has been done once and for all. The completed work of Christ. Now I simply get to humble myself in that, to submit my heart, submit my ideas, surrender, surrender all that I am to him. And when we do that, we attract the presence of heaven. We attract the presence of God when we surrender them. At the end of the uh, devotion today, we're going to take communion together. So I want to encourage you right now to find some elements, whatever that might be. Maybe you're driving to work or maybe you're listening to this in your car or maybe you're at home right now. Maybe it's early in the morning. Maybe it's late at night. Wherever you're at right now, take a moment, press pause. Okay, right now. And then go grab some elements right now, whether that be, it doesn't matter what it is. Grab something because at the end of this, we're going to take communion together as we wrap up our power of communion devotionals. So let's talk about the presence of God and how God is attracted to this. God is everywhere is not the same as God is here. God is everywhere is not the same as God is here. Yes, we believe and I believe that God is everywhere. Where you go, there he is. <laughs> when you go to the store, there he is. When you go into the forest to go hiking, there he is. When you're going on a run, there he is. When you go to your kids' games, there he is. When you're, when you're going by yourself somewhere, there he is. Okay? He is everywhere. His presence is everywhere. He encapsulates all of heaven and he encapsulates all of earth. But there's something different when we bring awareness to God is here. When we take communion, what we're saying is, God, I recognize that you are here, that you're right here in this moment. And not only are you right here in this moment, but you are my warrior. You fight for me. You sing over me. You are the one who does the work for me and that you have done it for me already on the cross. See, God is everywhere is not the same as God is here. And when we think about him, when we remember him, let's set communion aside. When we remember him, David used to say this all the time. Let's remind ourselves 
of God's blessing. They used to, in the Old Testament, set up, um, set up uh, stones as a memorial to where God was. See, there's something very significant about us remembering God because what it does is it brings back that moment to where God brought his victory. And so I want to encourage you with communion aside, let's remember Christ. When we remember him, when we set our mind and we set our thoughts to remember him, what begins to happen is, is we become aware of God's presence in the very moment where we're at. So instead of God just being where you're at, at the grocery store, you become aware of his tangible presence right where you're at. Because God is real. And sometimes I, I think that us believers, we forget really quick that God wants us to feel him tangibly. He's a real God and his presence is real. And one way that we can remember his real presence is to remember what he's done for us. The book of Zephaniah puts it like this in chapter 3, verse 17. He says, the Lord your God is with you. He is the mighty warrior who saves you. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer punish you. Instead, he will sing for joy because of you. I, I just think I need to read that one more time. That is so good. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17. And if you're at a place right now where you can follow along with me, I encourage you to grab your Bibles and read this along with me. The Lord your God is with you. He is the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer punish you. Instead, he will sing for joy because of you. See, he is right here, right now, with us as our mighty warrior who loves us, who does not punish us, who sings joy, songs of joy over us. This idea that God is mad at me and he's just waiting for me to mess up, to strike me down with lightning or leprosy or whatever, fill in the blank, right? That whole idea is absolutely incorrect. As a matter of fact, it's quite the opposite. Remember last week, we talked a little bit about that, how God is different He's built different. His ways are much different than our ways. His ways are backwards according to how we might think about it. So let me encourage you with this, that he is with you. And when we remember him, we align ourselves with his presence right here, right now. So I want us to do a little exercise as we close and as we wrap up here, as we talk about this. I want to read a prayer over you and then we're going to take communion together. This prayer simply goes like this. You are holy, Lord. You are worthy of every offering of praise I could ever lay at your feet. I come before you in reverence in awe of who you are and of your power that moves in the face of the earth. I take your body, Jesus, aware of the gravity of what it costs you to invite me into eternal life. I take your blood worshiping you with a purely devoted heart. You are a consuming fire and I stand amazed by you. So right now in your vehicle or right now as you're maybe got the elements in your hand, I want you to take communion with me because what we're going to do is we're going to invite God's presence right now into your room, into your space. And I believe that there is no distance or time with God. And when we do this, you're going to feel something. I believe that God's going to fill your room. He's going to fill your car. He's going to fill your ears right now. If you're listening with your headphones, he's going to do something right now where you go. This is God. So right now, Jesus, we take your broken body and we say, thank you for going to the cross. Thank you so much, Father, for for uh, uh, willingly laying your life down in sacrifice. So together we take your broken body. We thank you, Jesus. Father, we take your blood today. We thank you, God, that you are good. We thank you that you've forgiven me. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that even in the midst of while I'm being disobedient or turning my back from you, God, you still receive me and you still accept me because it is finished. And we love you so much. Lord, I thank you and we remember what you did for us. So right now, with your hands lifted high if you can, 
if you're able to. Just invite him right now into your space. Just say right now, in Jesus' name, I invite you, Holy Spirit, right now into my space, into my environment, into my atmosphere, into my room. Holy Spirit, we just thank you. Fill this place right now with your presence. I mean, I can even feel them right now, just here in the recording studio. Fill this room right now, Lord, with your presence and your spirit. God, we want to know you. We want to know that you are not just everywhere, but you are here right now with us. We love you so much, Jesus. Help us to take this feeling and go with us, knowing that you're with us. We thank you, Father. Amen. Love you guys so much. And I know God's presence is going to be with you because he is good. He's always good. And he's for you and he's not against you. Remember, he is your warrior. According to Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17, he is your warrior. He sings songs of joy over you. He's not here to punish you, but to bring you into love. Love you guys so much. Take care. Have a great rest of the day.